Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and this is another StarCraft 2 England cast. Now today guys, I have not got a super hardcore pro game, I've got a user submitted game. It is a Platinum League Protoss vs Zerg and it has been submitted by Retro, the blue Protoss player in the top left. He's playing up against Peter Lees. Peter Lees? Peter Lees? Peter Lees, I'm going to go with Peter Lees, yeah, that'll do. The Red Zerg player in the lower right. Now, obviously, being a Platinum game, I'm not really sure how I'm going to go about casting this. I think I'm going to pretty much shout cast it like I would a pro game, but I might pause it occasionally just if there's anything I particularly want to talk about. Now, obviously, being a Protoss versus Zerg, we should see, well, a fast expansion on Ahana is the first thing that I usually would go for, purely because on Ahana, there is this very narrow ramp, and it's very, very easy to take the natural base. So, obviously we'll wait and see if Retro does have a reason. Maybe a specific opening he wants to do for not going for that fast expansion. But, to be honest, you can almost get away with the Nexus first on this map. It's probably one of the best maps to do that on. Meanwhile, um, Peter, he's probably going to have to go for a 14 or 15 pull just to basically be safe against any cannons or anything like that. He'll then go for a relatively quick expansion and then take his third shortly after Retro takes his natural, basically. Now, looking here, this pro, very, very early scout, so I'm guessing Retro, being in Platinum, has had some problem with early cheese, maybe some early pulls, temples, etc. And that could be a reason why going for that pylon is a good move for him. Now, anyway, we see here that it was a 14 pull there, and the drone now coming out to scout, just get a good look around. We've got the gateway on its way down here. Now, obviously what I'm looking for is gas timings. That's the primary thing. Guessing this probe is gonna throw down a gas at some point. And they are currently queued up and doing nothing. Now, this is sort of a minor little thing that you want to try and avoid as best you can. You don't want probes just sitting around doing nothing, basically. Um, as you can see, not max down the minerals. These two probes just misrallied. The third one going to be misrallied as well. So, perhaps just a mistiming on the gas, judging by the amount of... Um, supply he's got that gas should have come down a bit earlier but it has been correct and there's little mistakes like that which you can expect to see the pylon coming down blocking that's going to be irritating we've got four zerglings coming out now again four zerglings here a bit too many in my opinion um you only really need two zerglings you can get four just to try and annoy that especially since the expansion isn't down it's not a huge problem but generally you want to try and get just two zerglings um more than that is a bit of a problem a small supply block here again it's little problems like these you want to be avoiding um and it really goes back to the fundamentals of the game the supply blocks are the first thing you should try and eradicate really just make sure you're always getting up your supply pylons overlords supply depots etc make sure you're not getting these blocks because that's what causes you big problems. It's delayed the queen and therefore delays any lava inject. Got, well, the cybernetic core coming down here. So very, very defensive play. The pylon coming down there as well. So really is playing as defensively as possible. We've got the third base coming down. Now, this actually is a bit of a problem. And in my opinion, a bit of a mistake. He's going for the normal timings that you go if the Protoss had forged fast expanded. But as you can see from the vision, knows that that wall off is there, but still takes the third base. That could run into some problems because, again, if this was a pro level game, the Protoss player, the only reason they wouldn't take that base is if they're going for something aggressive. And the second gateway is quite aggressive here. Now, as a result of that, this third base is probably going to get taken down and it's going to be a lot of loss of resources. Instead, if you don't see the Protoss with their natural there, what you want to be doing is throwing down some gas, getting up your road to Warren, and really being preparing for some early aggression. Now, we do see that these Zerglings are going to try and get up, but it's a complete wall off here. Now, again, that's not a problem at all. We've got the Chrono Boost scouted. That is important. Still no Nexus either. So, in terms of aggression... This is a really, really certain aggressive style build coming out now. If the expansion isn't down by about 5 minutes, then you know it's probably going to be about a one base play. Now, at a pro level game, I'd be starting to get really concerned by this point about what's going to be hitting. Um, Peter doing a good job of maintaining his resources. Now doing the right thing, chucking down the evolution chamber and road to getting the two gas up. That is precisely right. It's what he wants to be doing. It could be DTs, it could be air, it could be a four gate. Either way, he's going to need the option of getting spore crawlers out and also going to need the option of getting out roaches. So... Everything going precisely right there. Retro is ahead in terms of the supply count. He's getting up a third gateway now as well. So it's a bit of a strange build. Now, obviously, money-wise, Retro does have quite a lot in the bank. He needs to start thinking, how am I going to be spending all that money? How can I really make this more efficient? And to be honest, I'd be thinking, well, you either need to be looking to expand after this, or you need to be looking to throw down another gateway. We do have a couple of Zerglings coming up. They will scout this. And now the important thing, that Zergling is going to see that there is no natural expansion still. And this is really where you should be 
99.9% .9 sure that a bit of aggression is going to be coming in. There's no other real option other than being aggressive. The Nexus is coming down. The third base is not really doing anything. The other thing I'm really noticing is the lack of queens here. Um, again, you want to be getting four queens out on three hatches, in my opinion, early game. You get creep spread, you get the better defense. Two spine quarters is a great choice. You know you're about to get some aggression coming in. You've got the watchtower held by the drone. That's a good move. You might want to switch that out with a zergling just to be a bit more cost effective. The drone obviously sitting there could be mining. In terms of the work account, both players pretty low on their work account now. At this point, obviously in a pro game, you'll be seeing the Zerg player all the way up. Now, I don't. Th I think one of the problems is that these lava aren't being used. There's lots of lava sitting around doing nothing, and that's due to the shortage of drones. And to be honest, rushing our roaches in preparation for damage isn't necessarily the right thing. If you look at how long these units have just been sitting here and being are getting produced, you think, hang on, well this push is only just coming now. If you just saw that and you have more drones out, you could flood with units and they would be out in time by the time this push hits. So the third base is most likely going to be the target. The natural quite well defended with a handful of roaches there. A supply block is about to occur for the Zerg player. Retro though, he's in a relatively good spot. Now, the important thing here is if it's been revealed that your push is coming, you can do the psychological thing of, well, I'm going to fake the push, um, then force a lot of units which aren't drones. Behind this, Retro doing a great job getting up a lot of probes. He's starting to get the work account leads. So, to be honest, he's playing really, really nicely at the moment. Everything really keeping to the fundamentals, which he should be doing. He's getting some more gateways down. So, it's a big gateway push coming out right now. That already takes up to eight gateways. So, an eight gate, um, well, nine gate now. So, straight away here, I'd say nine gates, possibly a few too many. Um, you can't support that many gateways off of two bases. It just won't work. It will, it will be too much. You'll get very, very zealot heavy. And of course, that doesn't matter too much. But the probe count isn't hugely high. Let's look at the saturation levels. Well, here I'm seeing there's a bit of oversaturation in the main base. Could transfer some probes down. That could be an advantage, a way to really make sure you're managing your money a bit better. One probe getting taken out there. In terms of, well, Peter's position. Um, well, he's got no upgrades at all going. He's got a lair on its way out. He's also still, he's produced an awful lot of roaches. Now, the thing I'd say is if you produce this many roaches, don't just leave them sitting here. You you can come and aggressively try and take map control. The worst thing you'll do is see that your opponent's got lots of stuff and you can just run away because all while the units are sitting there, they are just wasted resources that you don't want. Looking at the work account, Again, Peter needs to start thinking about pumping armor. He's getting that second Evo chamber. He's got an awful lot of gas, though, so he needs to think about how he's going to start spending that. The roaches are now trapped, so in this situation, you can try and get around an awful lot of sentries there. So this force not actually geared to really deal with roaches at all. The, the zealots are not doing too well in the slightest. This cost-effectively-wise is going okay for Peter. He needs to try and focus down some of those sentries. That would be the best thing to do. Um, and, of course, once all these zealots are down, these roaches are going to do okay. Now, of course, the reinforcements come in. You want to pull back. You don't want to try and engage longer than you need to. You can micro these units back, trying to buy you some more time, because, of course, this has now put the favor all the way over to retro. The reserve player was doing so incredibly well until, of course, that push came. If he just pulled back and not overcommitted, he would have been in a great spot to defend this now. But the third base is definitely going to go down. There's just too many zealots there. There's no upgrades for either player, interestingly. Still an awful lot of gas. Um, the drone count's still really, really low. The third base gone, but it hasn't really been used at all, so that's not a huge problem. But do you see why this third base was irrelevant? Because, obviously, the one base player was the threat. In terms of the work account, the Proto player 10 workers ahead, and I'd really say that's probably, probably going to be pretty much GG. Retro should be pulling these sentries back. He's allowing them to engage head on with the roaches, but again, that's quite micro intensive. He may not have the APM. I mean, if we look at the APM, under kind of averaging about 70, 75 ish, so doesn't want to try and overcommit. Again, a couple of stalkers thrown in here would be a really, really good mix of the group because coming the zealot sentry on its own isn't dealing well with these roaches. The roaches are going to be the big threat. You know your opponent has got roach tech, so you want to try and transition out of the zealots and trying to get more stalkers up and you'll then start engaging a lot lot better so seeing here i think this is pretty much going to be game and retro should win here it's getting some good force fields down allowing the zealots to engage relatively okay but the problem is massing zealots is allowing the gas money to really start skyrocketing also an awful lot of minerals there so perhaps look to take a third base always when you're being aggressive look at your money and think hey can i expand behind this i mean a warp in of units just gone down and still enough money to expand should you want to these sentries are still pushing forward when there are a bit of a shortage of units to really back them up so this is a game where you don't want to overcommit to aggression because here all the sentries are going to get cleaned up and actually peter is getting in a position where he can really start counter-attacking quite nicely the zealots coming in in just in time but again 
again, if these roaches were micro back rather than trying to focus on the sentries, these zealots wouldn't have a chance at all if there was a better engagement angle, etc. But obviously, you can see here the zealots are still getting cleaned up very, very nicely. This roach speed has just chipped in. Now, if I was in Peter's position here, what I'd be thinking is, can I sneak out a couple of drones? Because as you can see, no drones at the natural, 21 to 44 workers. Now, this is the problem that a lot of players get into, is that you get into the mid-game, you've held off a big push, and you just end up losing because your opponent has better economy than you, because you've always got to be thinking, where can I get more economy? Ag here, again, start stutter stepping your roaches back, because you don't want to engage zealots head-on, you can kite them, you can minimise the amount of damage they do to you and be in a good spot, but I think here, this is going to be the win for Retro, there's just not enough money there for the Zerg player. And with this next warp in of Stalkers, the Roaches are definitely going to get taken down exceptionally hard. The supply difference is absolutely massive, but for now this should be all pretty much in the bag. I mean, I don't even see any way at all the Retro could lose this now, and um, Peter leaves the game. So, looking through that game, what would be the main things I say? Well, don't just have a, from the Zerg's point of view, is, hang on, let's switch back to the game camera. From the Zerg point of view... If we come to here, okay, I'm just going to go through this a little bit quicker now. You can see that the Overlord, of course, coming in to get some scouting information. The drone has scouted a lot as well. Sees there's no expansion here. That is the first thing. Sees the wall offs up high, so you know that the natural base isn't coming out quick. Yet still, that third base came out super early. That is because Peter is, and the Zopla, basically committed to going for that three base play very, very early. And doesn't react to what the opponent's doing, and that can end you up in problems. So that's the first major point I'd make. The next major point I'd make is a bit further forward, um, probably at about this kind of mark here. You've seen we've had these roaches sitting around for absolutely ages doing nothing. If they just came and pushed up here, that force is not going to be able to stop that many roaches. I mean, in terms of roaches, 16 roaches versus 5 sentries and 5 zealots, that's an easy win for the Zerg player. But instead, they're just sitting here being defensive, and that's then wasted resources. The engagement here, again, so as you can see, this engagement is relatively okay. The force fields went down loads, but here, this is the point where you can see the reinforcements coming in, pull these units back. I know it's only four units, but those four units back here with the other eight, that puts you in a much nicer position, and this third base might have been kept up. Now, again, we've got another good example of where perhaps pulling back would be a better move coming up shortly. As you can see, here, we're moving in, we've got a lot of roaches coming out. Now, here is where you can see, is this the best engagement? The other thing I'd like to point out for Retro's perspective is he's seen lots of roaches he's got enough money to switch into store for production but chooses not to that could be probably the thing that stopped him ending the game now is if he had a handful of stalkers this would have been over this is another good position a bad attack angle here you've got the roaches clumped up with zealots you can't really engage clumped up like that the force all dies so again don't overcommit. think when you've done enough damage you can pull back to reinforce and then go for a second wave of attack might be better but anyway guys thank you very much for watching i hope you did enjoy it um if you did subscribe i get new games up every single day of the week and if you've got any cool games you want me to cast then do as retro did and email them in to me and i'll give them a watch and if i think they're cool then obviously I'll give them a cast and try and give you a little bit of feedback on them. So anyway, thank you very much, guys. Flick over to my channel if you want any more StarCraft. And yeah, catch you soon. Bye for now.